Okay, so somebody has asked me online if they can help them to set up, if I can help them to set up a plan in Little Navmap from KRDU to KATL in the US, and they're talking about the PMDG 737 here, um, using ILS arrival so they can see how I do it because they're just starting out and they're really getting confused with you know what everything means and how to program things. So I'm just going to go through the basics of what they've asked for here. I'm using the beta of Little Navmap, which is probably not that helpful but you can download it for free from the Little Nightmap website and it's got some advantages and it's a little bit more stable than the old version. So, KRDU to KATL. So let's just close that search box. So this is how you might see Little Nav Map to begin with. So we're going to click the magnifier in the toolbar which pulls up the search dialog. We want KRDU as the ICAO code for the airport on the search and that pulls it up in the, the airport's search tab and we can right click on KRDU and we can set Raleigh Durham KRDU as our departure airfield. Yeah, so you can see that. And you can actually see I'm on the ground there already to save us some time when we have a look in flight sim in a moment. And KATL was the destination. KATL. So we'll right click on KATL and we can set Hartsfield Jackson as the destination. Okay, so there's our basic route. So the next thing we're going to do is figure out how we leave this airport. Let's just turn the AI traffic off so we can see something. Okay, so how do we leave this airfield? If we hover over the airfield with the mouse, this dialog pops up showing us information. Another way to see that is if you right click on the airfield and show information and choose the airport, a panel will pop up over here. And within that panel, if we just make this a bit wider, there's a weather tab so you get to see this in a bit more detail. So you can see wind is 359 at 5 knots. So that corresponds with, if we hover the mouse over this and wait for the dialog to pop up, if you look at the NOAA section, I, unfortunately I can't move the mouse down because it will vanish when I do it. The NOAA section, the third group of letters, say 35005 KT. That's 350 degrees five knots and that's the wind so the third group of characters on the NOAA readout is the wind so the wind is coming from this direction at five knots so five knots is not enough that we would consider taking off at five on five left generally I think it's between six and eight knots that an airfield will make the decision to switch runways so we haven't got a, a five knot tailwind on runway 23 for example. So we'll use runway 23 for our example here. So we right click on the airfield and we show the departure procedures for Raleigh Durham. And they pop up in the search box in Little Nav Map. And now we can, each time we left click on one of the procedures, it will overlay it onto the map. Yeah, so we can get something that we think looks sensible. So we'll keep going down, keep looking at them and there's a good one yep so SHPRD4 looks like a good one so at the moment oh that's going the wrong direction we want the next one down we want this one here yeah so at the moment again it's not determined between the runways so we'll right click on it and we insert it into our flight plan and when we insert it it asks which runway we want and we'll take off from 23 right so 23 right and say OK so it's put it now on the right side and it's become an orange line instead of a blue line and it's joined up the line that leads to Hartsfield automatically like a rubber band essentially so then how are we going to arrive at Hartsfield if we right click on Hartsfield and show the arrival procedures for Hartsfield we also need to figure out the wind so we'll hover over Hartsfield and we can see the wind in that NOAA line is 11012, so 110 degrees, 12 knots. So the wind is coming in from this direction at 12 knots. So we need to come in on runway 8 right, for example. So we need to look, we'll scroll to the bottom of these approaches, of the um, arrival procedures first, because it's got stars and then it's got the approaches. So we'll get our 8 right programmed straight in. So we can select it and it shows you that, you know, that going into the, the feathers there. If we right click on that and insert that, 
So that has put us coming in and doing this sharp turn. So what we do is we put a standard approach route ahead of the final approach to get us in there. So that's the standard approach route, the star. So we're looking for one for eight right. So let's try some of these out. And that one looks absolutely perfect. So we'll come along and we'll join it to Andre. And you can see the arrows on the legs. And then we go along and then it comes back. So we right click and we insert that. And we say we're coming into... Uh, it will be eight left actually, wouldn't it? So yeah, not not right. Oh, you've got eight left and eight right. So I guess that makes sense. So yeah, let's go and have a look at that again. Andre for eight. Insert it into the flight plan. It will overwrite it. Don't worry about you know making changes. So we want eight right. That's the one we said about earlier. Okay, and that will join up. So notice there are some areas here with dotted lines. That means it's your own navigation between the end of the star and the beginning of the approach. So we can close that up in the aeroplane when we see it. Okay, so that's our basic route. We're not going to worry about going in between these points. That's kind of a bit more advanced thing where you might look at jet airways. So the idea of these are corridors in the sky. So by the time you get to the top of your climb, you would get onto a corridor and follow it until you're near the destination and then leave it. But we're not going to bother with those. We're just going to go direct between the end of the SID and the beginning of the star. OK, so what we're interested in now in the simulator is looking at this list to get the names of things to remind ourselves. So in Little Nav Map, I have clicked on the cog menu on the flight plan section and I have chosen to show the procedures in the um, the list. So it's got the names here for quick reference. So I've got the runway names, I've got the the SID, the star name, and I've got the, the runway for the finals. Okay, so let's go inside the aeroplane. We've got a 737 sat here at our departure airport, and we're going to quickly jump into the FMC and program it. So FMC, position in it, and we can. it's already been done for us. So we're going to go straight into route. So we put in our route, which was beginning at KRDU. So KRDU. And we put that in origin. And then we put in our destination, KATL. So KATL. And that goes in destination. OK, so we are on the route page. If you're not on this page, you can press the RTE button to get straight to this page. If we press the next page here, you will see where you would put your airways in if you had used them. We're not going to. Yeah. So if we go and look in the legs page, there's nothing in there yet, but we have got stuff in the route page. So we can go into departure arrival now and program the SID and the star. So the standard instrument departure goes in the DEP section and we can choose the runway and the SID from KRDU. So we're 23 right and the SHPRD4 um, SID. So runway 23 right and then obviously there's more than one page full of these. So there we go, on the next page we've got SHPRD4. Okay. So I've now chosen the SID and the star. Sorry, the, the runway and the SID. And now we can go back to the route page and interestingly a normally a plane wouldn't program the the final you know the final destination route in until they're in the air so that's why you can activate your route immediately so we'll do that and then we'll go back to the arrival page so go to depart again go to arrival and we're just going to do this for argument's sake to show that we can do it and we remind ourselves and we can say runway 8 right and the Andre 1 uh, standard approach route so ILS for 8 right and the Andre 1 and there it is we're not going to worry about transitions you, what all the transition means is there are various different ways to get to the um, the star yeah so different entry points so we're gonna, not going to worry too much about that and you've also got approach entry points as well 
So if you look on a like Navigraph or something, you can see these all laid out, and you can actually see them in Little Nav Map as well. So if we go and look, for example, at that ILS for eight right, if you expand this out, you can see those two transitions. So if you were to zoom in down here, you'd see what difference there is between them. So there's the Great, and there's Peary. So if we did use that one, and we wanted to go from there to Peary, all we need to do in here is choose, pe choose Peary as the way into the approach. Yeah? So a transition is really the way into the thing you're specifying. So execute. So we now have essentially a route. If we were to zoom out a, long, a lot on here, oh, we can't see enough at the moment to see it. But it won't be a solid line yet, it'll be all dotted lines. And the reason for that, if you look on the legs page, we've got five pages of legs now. But you can see there's gaps. If we go next page, there's a discontinuity there. Unfortunately, it's right on the end of the page, so you can't see it. And if you could keep going next page, you'll probably see another one at the end. And oh, we haven't actually, there's not another one. Okay, that's fine. So there's a gap. So what that gap is, is the line in the middle, the yellow part of our route. So the FMC is not going to say what it's going to do in between here. So we can say nothing. We can say, actually, we'll, we'll get Andre, which was the beginning of our star. So we'll select it so it goes in the scratch pad. We go previous page. If we select the blank line, it will pull the rest of the flight plan up and remove the blank line. Yeah? So it now shows modified route. So we have to execute that to make it the actual or active route. Okay, so that's done. And when you look in here now, that's become a solid line. So if you want to then step through your route to see if it makes sense and see if it agrees with what you've got in Little Nav Map, you can go to Plan Mode up here, and that changes the mode of this display, and you get at the bottom right of the FMC a Step button. So if we zoom back in to a sensible amount, say t 10 or 20 miles, we can now go through our route and step through it. Yeah? And you can see all the way through your route what you're doing, and there's that approach that we programmed in, look. Okay? So at that point we can actually go and fly. So the real thing, just to go back over that, you put your route into Little Nav Map. You right click on the departure and the destination and make them the departure and the destination airport. Then you right click on them again and show procedures. Then you pick your procedures and insert them into the route and that will make the yellow line move to meet the ends of the SID and the star. Then you can put an approach on the end of the star because there's two parts, remember? There's this, the approach route, which gets you in the vicinity of the airport, and then there's the actual approach, which is like, you know, an ILS for a runway, for example. Okay, so obviously in the middle of the route, if you wanted to add some more, say we did want this VOR SUG, so we can right-click on SUG, and we can add it to our flight plan. If we add it, it will add it at the nearest point. So we'll go and say the Vortec for SUG, and what it's done is done it intelligently along that long line. So let's go and see how we do that in the 737 as well. So if we just go and jump back across to the 737, if we go and go backwards through these pages, we're looking for our way into the star. So where does the star start? At Andre. So if we go previous page, previous page, there's Andre. So, and you can see the gap in the distances there. So we want to put SUG before Andre. So all we have to do is type SUG into the scratch pad and then select Andre and it will push Andre down and make room for SUG. So it's, there's several options available. So it's saying you know, to confirm it. So we just say, yes, it is this one. So you can see SUG has appeared and we can execute it. And then when we look down, it has put a discontinuity in. So we can then close that discontinuity back up. OK, so now our route goes via Andre. If we go and zoom out, you'll be able to see that in context of the rest of the route. Yeah? Uh, so there we go. Sug to Andre and then into the approach. OK, I'm going to leave it there for today. But that just gives you some idea of programming a route straight into Little Nav Map 
and then having it come into the simulator. The one thing I didn't show, and it's not actually configured for it, I've got the wrong performance on the aeroplane. So this makes no sense on the altitude plot. If I go into here and open aircraft performance and go to, now where have I put them, D drive, games, little nav map, uh, oh actually I think it's in my documents folder, documents, little nav map files, aircraft performance, and we get uh, 737, doesn't matter what model. So that gives you some idea, and we'll go into here and we say IFR, and we type in, say we were going to fly at 36,000 feet. That will redraw itself and give you some idea based on the performance of a 737 of what you can do in terms of your approach and descent, and it will also illustrate any restrictions on the approach to do with altitude restrictions, because if you notice on the approach there are some restrictions, so you have to be at 13,000 feet to Andre. Then you have to be above 5,000 feet at Peary, for example. So it gives you those ideas. And then obviously, as you get in towards the, the final part of the route, you can see that here. Uh, I think we can zoom in vertically as well to get a better view of that. There you go. So yeah, so you can see there, look, above 4,000 at that point, at 2,800 feet at that point. And then you you should acquire ILS by then and in you'll go. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully that's helpful and we'll see you soon. Okay, I'm going to finish that.